spiritualist organizations. And each one of them has their own little guidelines, but we're not all that different. We all teach continuity of life, we all recognize natural law, and many other spiritualist organizations use the same educational course that the NSAC does. And if you visit other spiritualist churches, you may frequently find our Declaration of Principles in their hymnals. So we must be doing something right. We have a permanent office. They thought this was a good idea in 1893, and we still do. Now ours is located in Lilydale, New York, and that is where our national secretary conducts the business of our organization. That's where all our historical documents are. Historical, not hysterical. <laughs> that is where our national bookstore is. Anyone, anywhere can order books on the religion, philosophy, and science of spiritualism through our NSAC, National Office. The idea in 1893 was to build temples and lecture halls. Well, I, I don't know why they didn't include churches in that, because churches are our opportunity to learn and grow with one another through discussion, through our sermons, through our classes, and through our own church libraries. They wanted to provide a competent core of organized lecturers. Well, yeah, we try to do that too, don't we? <laughs> with our sermons and our classes, our seminars. Their idea was to bring uniformity into spiritualism. And I don't think that is such a bad idea. Yes, each organization within spiritualism may have a little bit of differences, but overall, we are all united. And friends, this is going to be more important than ever as our world continues to change, as it continues to grow. It is going to be up to spiritualists to work together. If we cannot work together, our clergy and our congregations, if we cannot work together, then how are we ever going to get out there and help others? You know, you, you see the news and, and you see that someone has been a career criminal and what they have done before they have finally been apprehended. And you think, you know, if someone was that smart to do that for so long, what could they have accomplished if they had put their intelligence into doing something wonderful and legal and positive instead of just looking at self and what can I get out of it? If they had put that intelligence and that work effort into something positive, they, they'd be known their name would be known, but for all the wonderful right reasons, not negative ones. <coughs> and we have that opportunity every moment of every day of our life. We have choices. We can work together for this beautiful religion. We can be, a, be proud of it, not ashamed. If you talk about church to friends or co-workers and they say, you know, you talk about church a lot, what church do you belong to? I'm a spiritualist. Yeah, sometimes you'll get that deer in the headlights look. But you know, more and more people are learning about spiritualism. <coughs> and they watch us, how we act, how we react, and the choices we make in life. So just like every good parent, we have to lead by example. Our actions speak much higher than words. And you know, that's a challenge sometimes because 
We're human. We're human. But we're learning and growing. And the wonderful thing is we can do this together. So I hope all of you, as you go forth in this week, if you have a job you go out of the home for, if you happen to see some family members, if you happen to connect with a neighbor or two, give them a smile. Be positive. At some point, they're going to have to say, I don't understand how you can be so chirpy and perky all the time, and then you can tell them. Then you can tell them what has changed your life. I'm very glad to have the opportunity to tell you what changed mine, this beautiful religion. Thank you.